So I guard on used moves. So this is referring to thousand arrows and thousand waves. Now you might be thinking, what do you mean those are Psyguard signature moves? It uses them all the time. Yes, in Gen 7 it can do that. These moves are in the data for Gen 6, but for whatever reason, they were never put in. Yeah, this is just another weird thing of the Psyguard gang fucked over in. Just no idea why these weren't implemented. You can assume that this is more... Pokemon Z and, you know, like, offense attached shit that just never happened. But it raises the question of why they weren't already just implemented into Psyguard's moveset in the first place, and then in Sun and Moon, you unlock these moves through the side quest, so I guess they were always supposed to be locked behind something like that. It's the most that makes sense so for this. How is AZ Immortal slash Full Story? So I'm sure you all remember AC, but info on him in the game is probably really lacking. You remember him, but you probably can't say much about him. And there's just a lot of unanswered questions that don't make much sense, such as his immortality. And we can presume that since he made the original ultimate weapon, that apparently is responsible for his height also maybe made him immortal, but this is never said anywhere. And most info on Bobblepedia, such as his history, his full at dying, and him being a king, seems to come from past interviews, and isn't really explained ever in the game itself. I remember when I was playing it for the first time, I was kind of confused on what his whole entire deal was. I just knew that he was from the past, and... Yeah, like, it's hard to remember a lot of this stuff, and I have no idea why the game itself doesn't go over this, aside from, again, just rush development, and you can only really theorize on things, and the immortality angle is especially strange, not just from it being not explained, but you would think that somebody who was 3,000 years old, more than that, and was a former king, no less, you would think at some point people would probably pick up on that, maybe I'm looking too much into this, but just imagine somebody like that in real life, they would be the most famous person on the planet, no question, so yeah, this whole entire thing's just really strangely depicted, and with Legend CA coming out, you can probably guess that he's going to be involved in the story, but I have a hunch that it's probably just going to be doing its own separate lore, and or it will just be raising even further questions. Point of Spooky Story Scene I'm sure a lot of you remember this odd moment. In room 14, there's a supposed haunted house, and some old man tells you a lame, scary story, and there's nothing else to this. It's a really, really random non sequitur, the most strange one in the whole franchise, and... There's just nothing else to it, and it fully hypes it up and interrupts you out of nowhere too, and for like no real reason, and a lot of people have thought that there is, again, supposed to be something more to this, like maybe you come back, maybe there's an easter egg of some sort, maybe there's something you can find in the shed, but no, there's nothing to it, and this might be another case of something that's just supposed to be a funny random joke, but just did not land correctly, again, especially in the unfinished state that is this game. Anastar Old Man Mysteries. This is a well-known uh, side quest from the game because of how sad it is. This is the dying old man who's depressed in Anastar and asks you to leave a level 5 for Lord Pokemon with him. If you do this, he will be gone and your Pokemon will be back and its friendship will be at max. This is the only side quest as far as I know in the series that does something like this, that instantly maxes a Pokemon's friendship, but also involves you temporarily losing a Pokemon in your party. And yeah, it's just kind of an odd random thing to put in the game. Now, Pokemon's not really a stranger to just stuff like that, but it's just such like a unique side quests and a game that otherwise is pretty barren of stuff that's just kind of like another reasons of why and like why include such a depressing theme off nowhere where somebody just randomly dies and 
you know, like, what exactly happened to him, like, who found him afterwards when he passed away, and he leaves a note with you, which means he was, like, kind of on his deathbed when he was, like, making that for your Pokemon, and it's just kind of why, and also, if you never give him a Pokemon, then he never dies either, and yeah, it's just, like, an oddly kind of, like, overly real and somber thing to include into the game. Hotel Inaccessible Room. This one's interesting, so... In the Hotel Richisme, which I think is the same one with the weird Hex Maniac, we keep on going back there. Uh, there is a door that is forever blocked off, and, you know, you talk to some NPC, and they're like, Oh, I had to go get a mop and clean stuff in. I barricaded the door off. You can never, ever get rid of this and access it. And people have discussed and theorized if there's a way to get through there. And, as you can guess, people are saying... This will be a future event, which of course never happened, which again just raises the question, why? And maybe it's there as, again, possibly a joke that didn't go well, but to quote anybody who's ever played a game, even Murder, She Wrote got this correct, is that it's unfair to leave a locked door anywhere because the player will assume that there's something important in there and try to get in. AC Battle Oddities. Back to this guy, uh, if you remember the battle against him that ends at the very end of the game, yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff to it. So, for one, it's the only kind of battle like this in the franchise that's like a post-credits one, not one that's just after the Elite Four, because, you know, Black and White did that, and the first game sort of did, with Blue being the champion, but not really. This is the only battle that takes place in this type of, like, scenario in the series, as far as I know. Not only that, but during this battle, your Pokémon do not gain experience, which, again, I think is the only battle in the game like this. And another thing that I believe is unique to the series is that you don't have to win this battle. If you lose, everything just continues like nothing happened, like you won either way. Which makes it so that, solely from a gameplay perspective, this battle is completely pointless. And, you know, like, this would be weird for the games to have either way, but in a game like Sun and Moon, where there's so many questions about it, this is just another thing that feels randomly tacked on that wasn't thoroughly thought through or realized, and just raises a lot of questions of, like, why is this like this? Why is this happen? Why isn't AC maybe, like, a post-game story battle instead? Maybe this would have been, like, a more properly implemented battle in a Pokemon C, and we would have gotten more answers about him at that too, but it just never happened, and now there's this completely unique, strange battle left over from it. Style points. This is something that you've encountered as you play through the game, but unless if you looked into it, you probably never knew what was actually happening. This is a hidden mechanic that the game never really explains to you. And it has to do with, for one, people asking you for tips. The higher you tip people, the more your style points go up. And fashion also affects this. Certain clothes will get you higher star points. And what these basically only seem to do is in Lucimos it lets you access certain areas that they otherwise like tell you to fuck off in and discriminate like the pretentious stuck up fuckheads they are. And you know like a lot of people who aren't American who play this game like if they're in Europe or something where tipping isn't in a comedy they'll be like no I'm not tipping you fuck off. And so you know this is mostly skipped by but from playing the game myself it seems like this really doesn't affect much because once you get to the end game and you get like the Pangoro hat or something, the style points on those are so high that you'll just be laying anywhere anyways and you can get into like the most expensive snobby gaudy fashion place, which admittedly has some nice clothes in black, I won't lie. And, you know, you can easily get those and get into the other places, which I think are just, like, kind of pointless too anyway. And just another strange mechanic, like natural objects. Mega Flygon. If you remember, this was the most asked Pokemon throughout all of Gen 6, and even probably onward of 
Why doesn't this one have a mega evolution? Well, Flygon was planned to get one, but apparently this never happened just because they were like, yeah, we couldn't really think of a good enough design though, which I think is really silly given the way certain other mega evolutions look and the simple idea of it. And there's plenty of fan, you know, like makeups of this that look good, they look passable and acceptable, they look like they could be official. But this never happened, and, you know, to me, it just kind of feels like another, like, borderline lie excuse from Game Freak. Sorry to go there, but, yeah, I'm guessing that they just didn't want to put in the time to develop one if it wasn't as prioritized as everything else. Megas for Gen 6 starters slash legendaries. So, Mega Evolution was the big new mechanic introduced to Gen 6 alongside the fairy type that was screaming out like we'll get this big revolutionary thing where I feel the series and then Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby came out and they were like yeah we're continuing it we're giving the starters and the legendaries these big mega forms so why didn't that happen for Gen 6 X and Y the ones that started this instead went to the freaking Kanto starters and other random Pokemon you would think, with this big new mechanic, this would be the game where your starter and the main legendary gets a mega form, but no. And I don't recall ever seeing any sort of entropy or anything that says that this was planned but scrapped. Yeah, it's really weird how these Pokemon didn't get ones, but others did. It's a really weird design choice. Anyway, next time I'll see you for more dark things.